Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Throughout the last several weeks, we've been hearing from Paul's letter to the Romans. We've heard Paul describe for us the necessity of relying on God's grace for salvation, but also the need for God's Spirit to help us as we struggle between our earthly, physical desires and how God wants us to live. Paul spoke of himself as being an addict, a slave to sin, who has been set free. And today, he takes us to the climax of that thought. In our text, we hear St. Paul speak of our Heavenly Father in those terms. He says, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And this is our text. Now there's a couple of truths we need to examine this morning. And the first is this. God, as our Father, gives us our identity as God's children. When we were baptized, God claimed us as his children. There was nothing to earn. There were no qualifications, no steps you had to complete. The fact is, Jesus had already taken care of all of that. Salvation is a gift that is freely offered to everyone. And that gives each of us our status as a child of God. And if that's true, that makes all of you my brothers and sisters. Now you know what they say, you can pick your friends, but you're stuck with your relatives. <laughs> well, you are my relatives. You are my brothers and sisters. And I'm delighted by that. About a week or so ago, actually several weeks now, I changed the profile picture on my Facebook page. I forget what I had been before, probably some New York Yankee thing. I've been known to do that. And I replaced it with what's called the diversity flag, or the rainbow flag. And the response to that post was overwhelmingly positive, with just a couple of exceptions. One was my sister, who correctly pointed out to me that the rainbow does not mean diversity. It means God's promise to Noah that he will never again destroy the world with a flood. Gotcha. And like I said to my sister, things can have more than one meaning, you know. <laughs> but there was this fellow who wrote to me and wanted to know if I was one of Satan's disciples. <laughs> he, he wrote to me and he wanted to know if I support child pornography and pedophilia and bestiality. Now, I understand that Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, these are like bulletin boards, just electronic. And anybody can post anything there. And typically, it's possible for people to get into this, I'll call it a dialogue, <laughs> where they're taking shots at each other and calling each other names. The best way to win that game is not to play. So I posted there that obviously we disagree. And I would be more than happy to engage you in a dialogue about this privately. But I'm not going to do it here on the bulletin board. So I wrote to the guy. And he wrote back. He, he called me a child of Satan. He wanted to know if my tongue was forked. He wanted to know if I was... I mean, he was just insulting. And so I just 
shut it off. But the thing is, I wasn't trying to make a political statement. It's about inclusiveness. It's about acceptance. It's about the fact, like we heard Isaiah say, our Lord is God. We are not. Amen. I let God do God's stuff. I've got enough to do to take care of my business. I've got enough to do to take care of my sins. Instead of running around pointing at everybody saying, sinner, 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 sinner. Remember Jesus said, before you go pulling the speck of sawdust out of my eye, pick the log out of your own. It's God who judges. And we heard that in the gospel lesson this morning, where someone planted weeds among the wheat. And the people wanted to tear out the weeds. But the master said, no, don't do that, because if you do so, you'll harm the wheat. You'll destroy the crop. I'm not making a political statement. I'll leave that to the politicians, who will tell you whatever they think you want to hear anyhow. I'm making a statement, and I fly that flag because the person in bed with you at night is none of my business. I fly that flag so that the Asian family across the street from me will have no reason to be afraid or blame for COVID. I fly it so that a couple holding hands in a restaurant need not worry about whether or not I'm going to judge them because they're both the same gender. Similarly, I don't judge the boy who sees me watching him as he examines dresses he might want to purchase. I show pride for all these folks because they too are God's children. I call them my brothers and sisters. Amen. And in fact, I wanted to write back to this guy and say, you know, if we are all made in God's image, and if we are all children of God, that makes you and I brothers. I've got to put up with your opinion, and you've got to put up with mine. Now, the second thing is that faith is a personal issue. God wants us to see him not as some far-off, distant deity, but rather as a personal God. All the names in Scripture that speak to God or speak of God are significant. But the one that means the most to me is the one we heard in our New Testament lesson, Abba, which has nothing to do with a Swedish singing group but rather refers to God as our daddy. Not just father, but daddy. Now I've got a stepson and a stepdaughter. I never think of them that way. I think of them as my son and my daughter. Because what binds us as a family is not our genealogy or our blood type, but rather our relationship with one another. And in the same way, it's God's Holy Spirit that binds all of us together as one family in Christ. Paul says, when we cry, Abba, that is God's Spirit bearing witness with our spirit. Paul wrote elsewhere in Galatians, and because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit in your heart cries out, Abba, Father. It's longing for a connection. It's longing for intimacy. It's longing for closeness. It's longing to become one with our Lord. Jesus' whole message was based on the premise, come see me and I will show you the Father. If you want to know what the Father is like, look at me. If you want to know what the Father says, listen to me. 
Because when I speak, it is my Father speaking through me. See the love that I have for you. That love is the Father's love for all of you. Come to me. Spend some time with me. And if you like spending time with my dad, you'll get to know him. For he and I are one. If you believe in me, he'll be your daddy too. God sent Jesus to show us our daddy's heart. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God wants us to relate to him and to one another in a personal way. We recently heard Jesus say, Come to me if you are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Elsewhere in John's Gospel, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Once upon a time, a seminary professor from Minnesota was vacationing with his family in Tennessee. They were eating breakfast in a little restaurant, hoping to enjoy a quiet family meal. And while they were waiting for their food, they noticed a rather striking gray-haired man walking throughout the restaurant, stopping at each and every table and chatting with the patrons. And the professor thought to himself, oh no, I just want some peace and quiet. Please don't have him come over here. <laughs> Howdy, said a friendly voice as he walked up to their table. Where are y'all from? <laughs> Minnesota, was the response. Well, it's great to have y'all here in Tennessee. What do you do for a living? Now, sure, I'm a seminary professor. Oh, so y'all teach preachers how to preach. Well, I got a really good preacher story for you. And with that, the gentleman pulled up a chair, sat down at the table, and the professor groaned and thought to himself, great, just what I need, another preacher story. <laughs> Man started and said, y'all see that mountain over there? Well, once there was a boy not far from that mountain who was born to an unwed mother. And he had a hard time growing up because everywhere he went, people would look at him and say, who's your daddy? <laughs> hey boy, who's your daddy? And it got so that the young man tried to avoid going out in public. He hated going to school and he hated going to church. Well, wouldn't you know, his church got itself a new preacher. And on the very next Sunday, while the boy was sitting there in the pew, the preacher got done sooner than anybody expected. And now the boy's trapped. He can't sneak out the door before the service is over. And as he's lined up here in the center aisle, and everybody's shaking hands with the preacher. The preacher looked at him and said, Y'all look familiar. Who's your daddy? <laughs> and immediately the boy cringed because he knew that every eye in the room was on him. Well, this preacher was astute enough and inspired by the Holy Spirit to continue, Oh, shoot fire. I know who you are. I can see the family resemblance. You're a child of God. Hey, guess what? So am I. That makes us brothers. Now why don't you all go on out and claim the inheritance that God set up for you? Well, from that point on, whenever somebody would challenge the boy and ask him, who's your dad? He would respond, 
I'm a child of God. And with that, the distinguished gentleman got up from the table and said, Isn't that a great story? And the preacher professed, That was a great story. And as the man turned to leave, he said, You know, if that new preacher hadn't told me that I was a child of God, I probably never would have amounted to much of anything. And with that, he walked away. The professor and his wife were stunned. And they called the waitress over and asked, Do you know that man who was just here talking to us? And she said, Oh, honey, everybody knows him. That's Ben Hooper. He's the former governor of Tennessee. <laughs> what a wonderful experience to be able to share God's love and to share it with our brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We worship God with our offerings.